Maybe I should take that advice, go get a life, or maybe get a job or something. Pack it up and head back home, tell everybody I was bluffing. Or maybe I'll just get out my head and focus on what I know's coming. Yeah. Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams. Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between. These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me that I'm a fool for trusting in these wings. Drinking themselves crazy tonight <laughs> Baby, I should call and say, told you I'd be right Wondering how long it was before you realized The biggest mistake of your life And now you're paying the price Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing Your opinion or mine, you know just what I'm choosing I gotta do this Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings But maybe, baby, this will fly Saturday night game action pairs two of the top three teams in the league with frontrunner Northmore seeking to extend their win streak to three straight in Trojan country where Centerburg looks to defend home court and even the season series. It all goes down live and free exclusively on the OH Report anywhere the internet can be found and it's all coming at ya next.
Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility. Podiatry and surgical consultations too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center. It's a world of great care right around the corner. We welcome you to the Knox Community Hospital pregame show Saturday night KMAC action right here in the heart of Ohio. I'm Brian Skaronski, KMAC Travis Barty is joining me for the second meeting of the season between these two programs. Big stakes when it comes to the league title race, of course, with the Trojans trying to kind of get level here with Northmore and the Knights trying to stay on top of the league, Trav. Yeah, this is a, it was a great game the first time. Andy Jardy and I called it at the castle. Northmore had a big five-point possession midway through the fourth. That they were trailing by five points. Big five-point possession got them even. They rolled from there to get a big victory over Centerburg. And since then, they've been playing very good ball. And Jax Wenger, he was hurt in the first game, back to 100%. And this team, they're starting to roll like Coach Tackett thought they would be before the season, before the injuries. Wenger helps make a great one-two punch with our player spotlight tonight. Well, we, let's talk about Grant Bentley, shall we? Uh, far and away the leading scorer in the K-Mac. I mean, this dude's really been lighting it up. He gets to the free throw line a ton. And what I like when I watch him play, though, is he can create his own shot from anywhere on the floor. Doesn't need no ball screens. He can utilize them. It's just a great offensive weapon any place that he can catch the rock. And what his offense is able to do is open up that kid right there, Jax Wenger, as uh, you'll see here in the team spotlight, Northmore's averages starting to come up. And one of the most important stats that we have on there, the free throw percentage. This is a Northmore team you and I have saw in the last five, six years that their free throw percentage is around 50%. This year though, a big focus, especially after how they lost that district championship game on free throws. Yeah. They've been going, they started around 60%. They have a uh, an opportunity to get up towards 70, which is a very, very big addition to their offense. Yeah, no question. And looking for a season sweep, of course, here tonight after taking the first meeting in North Bloomfield Township. This would be huge if they can get a big W here on the road inside what we're calling the Coliseum. Centerburg coming off of a big loss at Fredericktown. They kind of need a bounce back win to remain in the K-Mac race, especially with a lengthy road trip on the horizon. You see that four of their next five are going to be away from home and down a couple of starters here tonight, Travis. So this Trojan bunch is going to have to throw everything at them, including some young players, likely some freshmen. Yeah, uh, it's tough that, you know, their leading score, well, a couple of their leading scores, not their leading, leading score. That's Isaiah Suli, who we'll see here in a minute, but a couple of their other scores. One, a tough uh, ejection against Carrington. Two game suspensions, who he's out tonight, Trevin Harris, and then. Uh, Grayson Reynolds, too, in street clothes. So it's going to be on the shoulders of Suli and maybe one of these freshmen that are in here. I mean, 
they're pulling people from the JV squad in our roster that we have. One of the starters, not even on our roster. That's how how deep Coach Marhefka is going to have to go to his lineup. But they know that they can rely on Isaiah, a true floor general. Commands the offense, key cog at both ends of the floor. As you take a look at his numbers on the season, a dozen points per game. Definitely gets after you defensively more than a couple of steals. And he's the straw that mixes the drink. Yeah. Spreads the ball around to all the different weapons. And I was talking with Blade Tackett before the game. He's He was kind of surprised because you have Harris, you have Reynolds that can put up numbers even though they haven't played. But Su Lee is the leading scorer that they have out there. So he's really come on since the last time that these two teams have met. Dive now into our keys to victory. Let's begin with the Trojans here at home. I believe that they've got to just limit the giveaways. Travis, uh, you cannot give Northmore any handouts. It's a, a team that they're just too good in transition. If they can get up and down the floor, I mean, it could be a quick exit in terms of Northmore running away with this game early. Yeah, and another one, guard the arc. You have Jack Swanger, you have even Drew Hammond, Graham Bentley, players that if they're open, they'll shoot the three and they will hit the three. If you can guard the arc, kind of what they did in the first two and a half quarters last time, they will have a good opportunity tonight. And for the Golden Knights, run and gun, baby. Make center, Centerberg, like, try to play at your pace, and especially with some younger players out here that have limited varsity experience, I think that could be a big factor if they can enforce their style of play. Yeah, and mine, drive and kick. If they're at Northmore is able to drive to the lane, bring in those defense, kick it out, there's your three point. We'll now pause for a moment as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. With that, we are set and ready for Saturday night K Maction here inside of the Coliseum. The Golden Knights, the front runner right now in the league, going toe to toe with the number three squad here in the K Mac and a team that's probably been the most successful since this league came together in terms of boys basketball. Trojans certainly have put together a great program under Coach Marhefka. Yeah, Coach Marhefka, it doesn't matter. He's, he reminds me of Coach David Sheldon at Crawford. No matter who he has, he's going to try and get the best out of you. And with this, uh, the scheme that he plays, anybody can play in it if you play 100% and you're successful at it. So it, it's always, you know, the coaches say it's the players on the court, but sometimes it's the coach as well. Yeah, no question. I had an opportunity to bump into him in the hallway, and he was just breaking down the big win that they had at Cardington. But unfortunately, it was the last few seconds of the game, costing them here tonight with one of their top scores out of the lineup here. And then also the next game against Fredericktown and just the loss of Grayson Reynolds. And he's unavailable here tonight. But he said he was very proud, even though it was a loss for them against the Freddies, how his team competed. and. Much different starting lineup than what they've been accustomed to so far this season as they'll get a couple of fresh faces out there. Thomas Schaller especially. 
junior making his way up from JV. Lawrence, a junior as well, along with Scott and Hill. And then on the other side, Northmore starting to get healthy at the right oh, yeah, time. Absolutely. Bentley, leading scorer in the K-Mac. A.J. Bauer, he can hit the threes, getting better defensively. Hunter Falk can drive. He can get a lot of fouls drawn. Jack Swanger, I mean, one of the better underclassmen in all of the K-Mac. And then Drew Hammond, he had a big game defense on the offensive and defensive glass against uh, Centerberg last time. He also hit a couple threes as well. Uh, he has, he's close to 50% from beyond the arc. Trojan starting lineup being announced here in front of the home fans. As there is Suli, our player spotlight for the night. He's going to have to be big time for the Trojans to get it done here at home. I want to say what's up to everybody out there watching live and free on our Facebook and YouTube channel 4. Drop us some comments throughout the course of the night. And every home and kitchen supply timeout, we will read those comments over air. Always love knowing where you guys are watching from on this very snowy and chilly evening in north central Ohio. Temperatures right around 10 degrees and uh, we're used to it. It's been like this for the last, what, week? Yeah, the, the snow has stuck. It is here to stay. Flurries coming through yesterday, canceled basically all the games in and around our region. But we've got basketball going down tonight as the opening tip back tap. And it will belong to the Trojans. Big thing for the Trojans tonight, not offensively, but defensively, their ability to get out and run. That's how they've been able to beat teams is their transition. But turnovers have not been friendly to them. That was Hunter Folk reading that backdoor cut. So a giveaway for the Berg on their opening possession. As Northmore swings it side to side now on the drive here, Folk, who made the defensive play, going to be rewarded at the offensive end. He's got a couple free throws on the way. Great look at the beautiful clock that they have here in Trojan land. Seven thirty remaining here in the opening frame. See that on our Monarch Title Services scoreboard, and an empty trip for Hunter. In the last game for the Golden Knights for Hunter Falk, he missed the first two free throws in their game against Fredericktown, then went eight for eight. So maybe a good sign for him here today. Here he is off the hesitation, pulls up, clanks it off the square. And it's rebounded here by Lawrence. Sometimes you accidentally put clock cam instead of main cam for, re for replays, and it shows the nice clock. How about this? Two possessions, two giveaways. Drew Hammond, active hands. Ooh. But they toss it right back. Wenger, who's an exceptional wide receiver for Absolutely. the football team, almost made the over-the-shoulder grab but here Grant for the But Grant Bentley, TD. he's a golfer, not a quarterback. That's A.J. Bauer, and I think that's, you know, it didn't quite have the hookup there. That's and the difference. Kind of a sloppy first minute gone by here in this one. Still no score. Look at the defense, though. Pushing way out, but it's going to leave Suli open from the corner. Bottoms up for our first points of the night. They're going to have to rely on him a lot tonight, kind of like how they, were, they had Harris at Northmore. Trying to get Bentley here off the screen down low. And there he is from the flex cut. Get Northmore on the board. Yeah, Grant Bentley, he is the, he's close to, if not is, the second lean scorer all time in Northmore basketball history. That's going to be over the line that time for Schaller off the drive. That's all Jax Wenger there. He kept his arms down, used his body, didn't go into the, offensive player and just forced him to go out of bounds. Another turnover by Centerberg. Here's Wenger. Lawrence picks him up. Fies Hammond. And a bit of a tough shot right there off balance. One and done as Bennett Hill collects the defensive board. We kind of saw this the first game between these two. A slow start before Northmore got it going and then Centerberg answered back. 
They're going to get the switch. Hammond almost got a piece of that crossover. Suli with the setup. Great pass. Dishing inside, but walling up that time is Bentley, and it forces a travel. I think that Ryder Scott potentially thought that he was going to get fouled. And actually, Drew Hammond did jump up there, but got his hand on the ball. Scott caught it before he landed, and another turnover. Two and a half minutes in, five total points. Northmore looking to take their first lead. And it's going to be Wenger straight away, three rims out. Just missed off the side of the iron, and Suli right there for the board. Another walk. And that's what you're, you might get early on, especially with these younger players. Maybe a little bit of the jitters. You're playing varsity basketball in a big game, but they're going to have to really erase that right now. Only down one early on. you got to have to go on a nice run to stick with a team like Northmore. How about five turnovers in less than not three minutes so far for the Trojans? Somehow they lead it by a point, not anymore. How about that move inside? Bentley's got all four for the Golden Knights. Grant Bentley playing on a bad shoulder all this year. Pops out every once in a while, but he is still not afraid to take it to the hole, create some contact to get a bucket for his team. So he had Folk on his hip, drove in off the kick out. They'll spin it back around as the mid-range is pure here for Mr. Suli. Suli five, Grant Bentley four. The two leading scorers going back at it right now. From the elbow, Hammond looking for the backdoor winger. A lot of contact, didn't draw a whistle there. Locked up with Lawrence. And it's going to lead to a giveaway here for the Golden Knights. Hunter Probably should have been a kick. Yeah. Should have been a jump ball on the other end, too. Maybe the refs letting them go. Oh, blocking foul at the other end as Folk drove in. Bumping into the hip that time of Thomas Schaller. And he kind of took a nosedive yeah. and picked up the personal. Yeah, his momentum was taken away. Made that just enough for that little bump to knock him over. Bryson Kearns checking in for Northmore. And I believe that's Eddie Ocker who's just checked in here for Centerberg. Like I said, we don't have an updated roster per se because so many younger players are getting a look today. That might have gone off of Kearns last. We'll see. A couple hands in there. Referee right on top of it. Said last touched, of course, by Centerberg. So another opportunity for the Golden Knights. And we're going to get a... Kind of a hip check here. So go against Jack Lawrence. That's a third foul against the Trojans already here. Winger from the top of the key sneaks one inside, losing the handle as Kearns. Bentley stripped it back out though. So Northmore recollects, and we're, we're going to stay down at this end. A lot of frantic play going on here. Maybe somebody, one of the referees had too much butter on his popcorn, put it on the ball. I don't know. Bentley long two, came up short. Winger skies to the second level for the board. And he'll get another one. Scoops it out to Bauer. And that comes up short. Three opportunities, no points for the Golden Knights. Nice pass. And a diamond yep. traffic foul on Folk will send Ryder Scott to the free throw line. That was a beautiful pass inside. Something we saw in the girls' game, too. Could have taken it to the hole himself, saw the higher percentage pass, little bounce pass. Draws the foul. Free throw shooting. 0 for 3 to start the game on both sides. Isaac Black will give Hunter Falk a breather. And Scott knocks down the second. We get a two point game. And a conversation with head coach Blade Tackett and one of the officials here. I think uh, so, one of 
the Northmore place kind of sounds like timeout. And the referee thought T Blade Tackett said that. His mistake, we restart. Winger goes away from the ball screen. Now Bentley from the corner, hard drive, puts it up right hand. And that's going to be the second foul against Lawrence. Just look at Bentley taking it in. Excuse me, that's going to be Suli picking up the personal. Had Suli on the hip. Referee saw just a little bit too much body. Bentley, who shot it really well from the free throw line so far this season, one of the leaders in the KMAC. Misses them both. Talk about their great free throw shooting there. How they've been able to improve on it, and they're 0 for 4 to start. Knights in a 1-2-2 zone look, and they love trapping when the ball goes to the wings. This is big for A.J. Bauer. He has to run both sides to get to that trap. The other wing of the 1-3-1 will drop down. Oh. Cheesy Chris Suli. One heck of a move right there. I think he almost lost, actually, the ball, and it, it worked out to his benefit. Trevin Harris scored 18 in the first half against Northmore last time. Suli's taken that reign this time. Wenger came up a little bit shy with that one. Runner right side. So four-point lead and a chance to add to it here for the Berg. Just over two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Now Isaiah. Isaiah pops the three from the corner. Big one. Might want to guard him. Wide open in the corner. Dude's ten got points. ten of the 11. And a timeout for real this time. Taken by Northmore. Blake Tackett. Probably telling his voice, you might want to get out and guard him. He can beat you by himself. It is right now. Yeah. Uh, 10, ten to of, 4 count in favor ten of, the 11 of Mr. Suley. And on the other end, Northmore just not hitting shots. This is the perfect storm for the Centerburg Trojans right now. An Building offense, its lead to 7. Looking a little bit rushed out there right mm -hmm. now for the Golden Knights. Not getting premium looks. Seen a couple of hero shots, if you will. Kids driving into the lane and forcing some things up. So out of the timeout, you would expect them to get in one of their most comfortable sets, come out and probably get a good to great look. Something Northmore also likes to do, they like to freelance. So they like to just go five wide, get some passes in there, get a couple screens for the main shooters and get the open shot. So you may see something like that where they play their game. You get a screen maybe for Jack Swinger. You get a screen maybe for Hunt Grant Bentley to get it an open look just to get this offense going. Said they'll set up a three for Bentley, and he finds nothing but the bottom. Something like that. Grant Bentley carrying the offensive load. He's got all the points so far for the Golden Knights. That was a great chance for Hill to take it to the hole. They didn't switch on him, but instead he just stopped the free throw line. Nobody looking for their own shot except for this gentleman right here. Isaiah Suli off the drive. Count it. Whoa. Old. Is it on the floor or is it? A good bucket. You would have to count that. He put it up as the whistle was blowing. Yes. I don't think there was any question about continuation. You yeah, saw the ref stop for a second. You're thinking, did he get it or did he not? So Isaiah Suli continues his unbelievable first quarter. He's already at a season average for scoring. Just seven minutes into the contest. Got a football count up there on divisional <laughs> NFL weekends. Yes. Last I saw, 10-10 uh, was the score in the AFC divisional. That Catch and shoot for Wenger. <laughs> yes, Travis? I said that was the foul on Drew Hammond, his first. So the cold shooting continues for the Golden Knights. And now a chance to... Possibly get this to 10 points for Centerberg at the end of the quarter. 
Got to be such a confidence builder right now for the Trojans with two of their top three players out of the lineup here. And especially with Grayson Reynolds, one of their seniors sidelined, Trevin Harris, really starting to blossom here at the midway point of the season. Had 27 in that win at Cardington. Mm -hmm. And that's what really propelled them to a, a chance at the K-Mac lead until that tough loss to Fredericktown. Jax Wenger nearly got the steal there. And I just love that hustle right mm -hmm. there. I mean, it was unlikely that he was going to be able to accelerate and keep that baby in bounds, but he gave it everything, unloaded the tank there for a moment. Suli back off to the freshman. Might see Eddie Ocker get a lot of minutes. Isaac Black with a steal. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. It's going to be team foul number five, though, against Centerbird. So with 18 ticks remaining, two on Suli. It's going to send him to the line, though. They are getting Ryder Scott for this foul. Nope. You're correct. I'm sorry. It's okay. A little slow with the scoreboard here. That happens to me so many times, too. Shooting woes at the free throw line have been on oh, full display. Five. Shooting 66% as a unit from the free throw line. And now they've got one. Defensive energy and effort starting to pick up here for the Golden Knights. There's that transition, but again, the hustle by Jack Swinger. And for Ryder Scott, you'd love to see him make just a, a tough catch right there, stop right at the block and go up for a shot. A little lackadaisical with that catch, and it cost him an opportunity. But they still have nine seconds. Great look, backdoor entry, and it's wide open for Lawrence. Beautifully executed, and like I said, it goes back to head coach John Marhefka. Wenger misses it at the horn. Northmore getting doubled up after one. It's 16-8 on our way to the second. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health, believe in we. We welcome you back for quarter number two on this Saturday night K-Mac showdown between Northmore and Centerburg and a dog in the house. And also a shout out here real quickly to the concession stand and the wrestling moms all chipping in. They can't be out here in the gym. So we're providing the live and free. They're providing the snacks. It's a harmonious whole atmosphere here. And I with see you food. haven't eaten the jalapenos I was going to give you from the concession stand. I ate one. Okay, you, okay. And a jalapeno by itself, not that good. Neither is that shot right there, but Grant Bentley keeps it alive for a moment. Lawrence with the theft, looking to go end to end, switches to the left. Woo. That is one way to beat Jack Swinger. Just strong up to the hole. Last four points all belong to Jack Lawrence as Bentley continues his offensive scoring outburst. 11. That's all, folks. He had 24 <laughs> the last time these two teams met. 18 in the second half. Oh, Hammond read that one all the way going in for the easy bucket. 5-0 quick run here for the Golden Knights. That that bucket by Bentley from deep may be the spark for the Golden Knights, but here's Suli. He's going to go to the line. That's a great way 
to take some momentum away. Just take it to the hole and get fouled. A lot of contact there in the whistle going against Drew Hammond. That's his second. So Suli's got two Hammonds, a pair of fouls as well. Thomas Schaller also with two fouls. Fourteen points now for Isaiah. Lead pushed back up to six. Golden Knights have scored the last two times. They've had the ball, looking for three in a row. And too hard, the pressure that time affecting the shot from Hammond. This shot to the corner, three ball lands and it's home for playing ball. Big shot from the soft. First minutes of the game and he comes up huge to get this lead back out to eight. Nine, I mean. Skip pass, open shooter from the corner is Bauer, a little too much. Here comes and that transition. They'll push it ahead, ball, got a shot blocked Ooh. by Wenger, what a recovery. You think Jax Wenger's foot's all right? He has really, I wouldn't say changed the game, but he's kept Northmore in this early on with a couple big key defensive stops there on transition. Maybe a play of the week nominee right there too. And it, instead of two points, that hustle turns into Northmore ball now. Yeah, that's a great point there. See how everything ended up playing out. This has been the end of the floor for Northmore that's been a bit of a challenge. Tough look from the short corner, and Bryson Kern sneaks one in. Northmore likes to drive baseline, but usually to open up the other end of the floor. However, if they're not going to guard him, they're not afraid to get back in and take the shot. Second bucket for Kern. Wenger got all ball. Caught a bit of Isaiah's hip, though, and that's exactly what it was. Yep, a little bit with the other arm. Got the block, but the arm into him. That'll be his first foul. Lance Sully on the free throw line. 5.25 to go here before the break. And Isaiah putting the offensive load on his shoulders here tonight. As already mentioned, two typical starters out. Grayson Reynolds due to injury. Trevin Harris serving the second of his two-game suspension. Bentley on the block, hard turn, but he's turned away. Lawrence with the block shot, four on four, Suli through traffic. Really tough shot, and Wenger comes up short. Second time he's tried to play Joe Montana, and he got picked off this time. Suling, catch and shoot from the foul Jeez. line. Jumper's good. Kid's got 18. He is having an out of his mind half. No fear in Isaiah Zuli, no matter where he has the ball on offense. Largest lead is 11. Hammond can't cut into it. One and done. Lawrence securing the rebound. As Suli gets the on-ball screen, actually goes away from it. Haven't seen Hill look for his own shot. He jumps into traffic, and referee says he walked. Yeah, they're trying to grab at the ball. He went with, went to pivot, shuffled both feet. You couldn't have asked for a better start by Centerberg. Once again, last time, Northmore was able to have enough balance to even out Harris in the first half. This time, they don't, and Sue Lee's just taking over. Hearing from Coach Marhefka and the staff before the game, they, they're just hoping to compete here tonight, let alone come out 
and build a double-digit advantage with four minutes remaining before the break. But that's something when you have a team that has nothing to lose, they come out and play like this, especially when you get one leader that wants to take a game over. That'll be on Bennett Hill as first. And another foul that might be on Hill again. Yeah, two fouls in about two seconds here against the Trojans. And that's something that the only thing that cannot happen to Coach Marhefka's squad is their veteran players getting into foul trouble. Second on Bennett Hill. Backdoor Back, cut. Yeah, Bentley with the catch. Got a shot blocked again. And letting him play inside as no whistle came for Bryson Kearns. Now Centerberg just needs to take advantage of that. Trojans work it from the right to the left. Now back into the hands of Schaller, getting chased out defensively by Isaac Black. Let's it rip from long range, and it's off target for Hill. Here comes Bauer, nice dribbling. And thought that he was going to be able to set up Kearns for an easy one, but the pass. Missing the mark. That's just trying to do a little too much right now. They're trying to force the issue down 11 when they don't need to. Three minutes left only in the second quarter. Just keep running your offense, getting some open shots. They'll Eventually, they'll start falling. You do that, but they're rushing it, and they're playing right in the Centerberg's game right now. Schaller goes down to the floor, and a timeout quickly taken by Coach John Marhefka. It's a home and kitchen supply timeout to be exact, and with that, we will dive into the comment section, see what's going on out there in Facebook and YouTube land. Travis? Oh, well, Tanner Slusher, the pirate ship, rooting for Centerburg so his team can be on top unless they lose to Fredericktown tonight. Fredericktown just knocked off Centerburg on Tuesday. Right. They're not that bad of a squad. They play later in about an hour. Uh, Tim Eichhorn, go Knights. Megan Sargent watching from the concessions. There's hey. our wrestling moms. Tammy Worm, let's go Jax Wenger. Matt Planey, go Knights. Donald Smith, number five, has started most of the year. Still young. Bonnie Wiseman is watching. Go Knights. Becky Strobel, good evening to us. Always thank you for your live and free streaming. Basketball gets me through wintertime. Basketball gets a lot of people through wintertime. Go Knights. Daniel Stotts, as always, hello. Rooting for the Knights. And Joseph Peters rooting for Northmore. Appreciate all you guys tuning in live and free this evening. If you're a Trojan fan, got to love what you have seen so far at both ends, though not right here. Folk sneaks in and takes it the other way. First bucket of the evening for Folk. Oh, Suli breaking ankles on his way to the cup, but it's going to go the other way. Yeah, you got to shuffle the feet right before Folk fouls. That's a tough break for Centerberg there. It looked like they were going to get free throws. Chance to capitalize if they've trimmed it down to single digits. Here's Bauer off the attack, leaving people in his wake, but he throws it away. Great defensive effort right there from Jackson Ballinger. And then gets tossed down to the floor by Wenger. They're going to get Bauer actually with the chuck. Frustration foul after turning it over the second possession that he's had it. Knights with a 1-3-1. One, one. Suli lets it rain, baby! 21! He shot it and started running the other way. That's confidence right there. The man has found a zone, folks, at the offensive end. But an answer with Jackson Wenger taking it to the bucket M1. His first bucket of the night, and they needed that one badly. Well, the referees are discussing amongst one another about whether the basket should count or not. 
Mm. They're they saying who was on. Okay. It's the third on Bennett Hill. And the referee kind of half did the count the bucket, but the scores table, yeah, they're asking if it is. And they are saying count the bucket. Felt like the right call. Yeah. Gets Winger in the scoring column, puts him at the free throw line, a chance for one more, and we're back to single digits. Buck 43 remaining. For Centerberg, just keep control, keep possession of this, get a couple buckets for Northmore, turn up the heat, get a couple you know, turnovers, maybe a little bit of a run. And that's a foul before the 10 second call. That's what Coach Tackett and his crew are asking for. Thought that they hit the 10 second mark. Instead, it's going to be the third foul assessed to Hunter Folk. So he'll check out. Bauer spells him out. And that's four team fouls on the Golden Knights. The next will put the Trojans on the free throw line in the bonus. Soli skip pass. And you saw Ballinger thought that he had another teammate out there who's just trying to set a screen and open things up. Yeah. One of the players was there. He started flaring back out to the top of the key. Nobody replaced him. Moving screen. That's going to go against Drew Hammond. So no free throws because it's an offensive Player foul. foul yeah. But it does get the Trojans the ball back. Should be the second, yeah, there it is. Second foul on Drew Hammond. Kind of a pivotal final minute here, I think, for Centerberg. Oh, absolutely. If you can at least maintain or add to your lead, that'd be monstrous. But Bentley with the theft sends wow. it ahead and Bauer puts it home. Most of the Golden Knights points coming in the transition game here tonight. That time Bentley threw the touchdown to Bauer, but it's answered on the other end. Big shot from Schaller as he knocks it down. Forced up. Wenger not the beneficiary of a call, and now Isaiah Sewell, like a fullback, absorbs the contact. He'll head to the free throw line. Isaac Black picking up the personal. That'll be his second. But look at the body control just to allow oh, the defender to fly by. Black didn't get a big chunk of him, but still enough to affect the shot. And Suli continues a career half. And he's going to check out here for That's the last smart. 29 seconds. Don't want to get your third foul. Bentley looking to go to work, and he's going to get tripped up. He'll get free throws. I think the referee said the foul's actually on the floor. Oh, what a find by Bentley. Nobody picked up Hammond right in the middle of the floor. Back down to nine. Trojans can push it out to double figures. They've got eight seconds to play with. Ball's loose. Hammond going down on the floor. What's the call? That's going to be free throws for the Golden Knights. Wow, so the whistle goes against Blaine Ball diving for the loose rock down here in the corner. You see Hammond. Kind of put his head into Hammond. I, I think that would be better as a no call, though. Hammond had a, a, maybe a half foot ahead of him, but they're both going for the ball, right, Brian? Well, it certainly looked like Drew just kind of dove underneath him. He had an arm over the top, so I don't know what you want Blaine Ball to do in that situation. Works out well for Golden Knights fans as that's point number five. 
here for Mr. Hammonds. And friendly roll on the road here for Drew. Cuts the lead down to seven. Hammond got a piece of that one as well. I thought he was going to catch it right. and have a chance to drive in for more points. Kind of stuck on his hand and bounced upwards. And that actually helps Centerberg because they can get a set off of 4.2. Shots away from straight away off target from Lawrence, and that is how the half will end. Northmore getting themselves back into the game. Fell behind by double digits. They trail by seven here with two quarters in the books. We'll be back with our Knox Community Hospital halftime report that will include stats, analysis, and we'll get you all set for quarter number three. You're watching live and free game action exclusively on OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility, podiatry and surgical consultations too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center, it's a world of great care right around the corner. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. You're enjoying Saturday night KMAC basketball 100% free of charge. It is always that way here on the OH Report. That's just how we do things, and we do it with the help of our generous sponsors. Give it up for Monarch Title Services. If you're selling or refinancing your real estate, you get to choose the title company. Why not support those who support the Trojans and close with confidence anytime, anywhere? Hit up Rochelle Sammons and her crew at Monarch Title. Knox Community Hospital, they're always in the community for the community. So is Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert health care. 
Morrow County Job and Family Services. If you call the number in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead, you can see what services are available for your family. Home and Kitchen Supply is your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Located in downtown Mansfield, but they provide great services all over North Central Ohio, down here in Knox County as well. We'll be right back with your guys' halftime reports presented by KCH. See you in a moment. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility, podiatry and surgical consultations too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center, it's a world of great care right around the corner. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. It's half time here in the heart of Ohio in this, your Knox Community Hospital halftime show as Centerburg off to a great start here at home. 33-26, they lead the KMAC leading Golden Knights at the break. I'm Brian Skaronsky, Travis Barty is with me, and how about this halftime entertainment? It has them dancing here at Centerburg in the lead. Nobody out there performing, no cheerleaders, no dance team, no shooters or nothing, so that young lady took it upon herself to oh, get yeah. out and make it happen, so we applaud her. Absolutely. Giving a little face time right here. These are your halftime stats, tracked by our outstanding intern, Miss Emma Bell, and you see- Soon to be Aussie, Emma Bell. <laughs> Yeah, that Aussie Emma, <laughs> great nickname. I like it already. You see 12 rebounds to just seven for the Golden Knights. And the turnovers, wow, a lot of them for Centerburg. But Isaiah Suli was so special, they were able to cover up some of those mishaps. Yeah, 23 first half points. Now about four or five of those turnovers were turned right back over. So it kind of cancels things out. But on top of that, it's just a performance by Suli. Northmore could not get it going on early on. It's a perfect storm for the Centerburg team trying to refine its identity tonight. 
Yeah, no question. Mention one more time, no Grayson Reynolds, no Trevin Harris, no problem so far for Centerberg, who's got a younger roster out there. They're throwing in guys that got 50 on their jersey, not even listed on the JV or freshman roster. So Coach Marhefka and his crew, they're digging deep here in this one, and they're getting contributions from everybody. But 23 of the 33 for Isaiah Suley certainly has been the number one storyline, and he's done it in a variety of different ways, Travis. He's been able to pull up mid-range, get to the rack. He's been fouled, knocked down free throws, and buried a couple threes. Six to seven from the free throw line, three threes, four twos, 23 points to lead the way. Some other scoring, four points from Jack Lawrence, two from Scheller, one from Scott, and then another three from a player I don't have on the roster. As for Northmore, they are led by Grant Bentley's 10 points. Six points from Drew Hammond, three from Wenger, two from Kearns, two from Falk, two from Bauer, one from Isaac Black. Score by quarter, 16-8 Centerberg in the first, 18-16 Northmore in the second. We'll see how they do it here. Now, last time, Northmore was able to uh, shut down Harris in the second half. I think he scored only like, f I think, four or five points. They're going to have to do that against Suli and make somebody else score here, or they're going to be in deep trouble. Looks like Wenger's got that assignment. Whoa! Hammond cracks the crouton out of midair. No postage, no entry. Get out of here. I feel bad for a couple of those cheerleaders out there because they almost got taken down like bowling pins at the severity of that block. Here's Sully off the switch. He'll get picked up by A.J. Bauer. Switches back out top here on Hill. Here's Isaiah looking to go to work. Clean catch and shoot for Bennett. Comes up short. Hammond with the board. And the Golden Knights do their job defensively on the opening possession. You're going to see a lot of face guarding on Suli here in the second half by the Golden Knights. Well, no look pass. Drew Hammond baseline drive. And he missed that one. Had the look there just a little bit off. So we kind of look the Trojans get here on this second offensive opportunity. So what happened here, Schaller was going along the baseline, did not reestablish himself fully when he caught the ball. He's out of bounds. That's what the referee says. I think the video would prove that he had both feet back in, in bounds there. Nevertheless, turnover number 16 for the Trojans, yet they lead it here by seven. And the lead will stay that way. A couple opportunities for the Golden Knights. And this has been a bit of their Achilles Hill as well. Second chance points. They've had the offensive rebounding edge, but they haven't been able to capitalize. Exactly. They're, I think they're more focused on trying to draw fouls than just putting the ball in the hoop. And it's, it's good defense by Centerberg, not fouling. Schaller dips it inside here for Lawrence. Right back to him. Three's on the way. Overshot everything. Kept in bounds, though, by Ryder Scott. But it's scooped away again by the Knights. They've been very active on the defensive end. Hammond misfired on the three. They regain possession again. Fork throw threw it away. Schaller with the pick. Lost the handle on his way up, but Lawrence is there for the putback. Six for Jack, first bucket of the second half for Centerberg. Bentley thought about it, maybe a half second too long. And the loose ball foul assessed to Hammonds. It'll be the first on either unit here in the third. And the third on Drew. Doesn't look like Coach Tackett's going to go to his bench. He'll leave his senior out on the floor. If this was the second quarter, he would be taking a seat, but with 5.45 in the third, he can't afford to do it right now. Zippy passes around the perimeter, and Schaller knocks it down from the corner. You can give him enough open looks. They're going to have, they're going to start hitting. Back to a 12-point lead. Second made field goal for Thomas Schaller. 
Shovel pass, and wow, look at Jack Lawrence diving on the floor. Trying to create a turnover. This is about who wants it more right now. That's Centerberg. Knights down by a dozen. Needing to find an offensive spark. This is the guy that can do it for you. The leading scorer in the K-Mac. Straight to the cup. And a quick timeout taken as he puts up a dozen points. But that's the first here of the third for the Golden Knights after allowing five to the Trojans. Yeah, that's Grant Bentley. He's going to have to pull a Suli right now. Drew Hammond had some buckets at the end of the first half to help them get back to within seven, but it's been Grant Bentley that first half, and he's going to have to continue to do it at least until Jax Wenger can get something going. On the other side, it's, it's the guys around Suli. They're going to have to get going. Jack Lawrence and Schaller both have done that so far, and those role players are going to have to do more because Suli is going to be face guarded the rest of this game. Looking down on the Centerberg huddle right there, you just feel a sense of belief. They've done it for this long now that they know they can hang with this Northmore team. And you got to think they're a little bit angry after losing to the rival on Tuesday night at Fredericktown. That's a great point. And that's actually what dropped them from a first place tie. Hill's got to get it across in a couple of seconds. Oh, AJ like Bauer. Let's see the replay. Did he actually deflect that off of Suli? Uh, the think hand was out there. I think he might have slapped it off the hand. Bauer definitely got a piece of it. It'll be a, another giveaway here for the Trojans. Suli read that one, but he could not confiscate the rock. So it gives new life to this possession for Northmore. Hammond off the drive, lost it off his knee. Take a look at the replay. Uh, the referee's saying that somehow got slapped out. I. Nonetheless, nonetheless, okay. It definitely has felt like Centerberg's been on the wrong end of about three calls here this evening. That's one of the more glaring ones. Doesn't cost him though the turnaround jumper. Well off the mark there for Folk. The hook around the head might have helped block that shot. But right to Jeez. Drew Hammond. It was like it was intended for him. He goes straight to the rack. Hammond looking like a corner there. And now a double dribble. Night Nation starting to get loud here in the building on the road. Defense is what's going to have to get this team back into it. They've shown it the last two possessions. Now they have to be able to hit some shots. It's been easier said than done, but catching a break here through the hands of Schaller. And a foul on the drive here from Bauer. That's on, no, it's not on Sue Lee, it's on Schaller. So that's Schaller's third. And a little bit of building frustration after he turned it over. Should have had that steal. And now it's a shooting foul? He was passing that, but they're saying it was in the act of sh I am uh, baffled. We can take a look at it one more time here. I. Well, you see up at the top of the screen where it says if you want to call in fraud. <laughs> Maybe the last couple of calls here. Might want to ring the line. Trojans hanging on to a seven-point lead for now. They had a 5-0 run to start, but Northmore right back at you, 5-0. Suli has not scored yet in the third. He loses the handle here. Almost popped out for the Knights. Mad scramble for the ball, and Northmore comes away with it. They'll send it ahead. A.J. Bauer. Two more easy ones. Two possession game. Coach Mahefka got to burn a timeout as the Golden Knights have scored the last seven. This is more of the Golden Knights that we've seen in the past. And like I said, Suli 
was carrying this team in the first half. He has yet to score. Northmore's been doing really good on him. They're trying to rely on the other players, these younger players. And they're kind of, I wouldn't say crumbling under pressure, but this pressure of Northmore is really causing them problems as of right now. So Coach Marhefka sitting his guys down saying, hey, we got this lead for a reason. We played fundamental basketball. We're not playing at 150%. You know, we're playing at our pace. Let's get right back to that. We still have a lead. Let's calm down here. Because, I mean, how wide-eyed were you when you got your first varsity minutes? I mean, in a key situation. You're Mr. Clutch. You probably had 30 points or whatever. But, you know, for most Career play, high at 24. Yeah, that's Don't exactly. Don't blow me up that's too exactly. much, buddy. Come but, on. you know, some of these players, they're getting their first minutes, and they want to try and do everything right. They want to sprint down the floor. You don't have to. Also, you still have the lead here. Just calm down. Get back into your pace. They're in a great spot, and I think especially Suli still scoreless in the third. Yeah. He's been a little inconsistent with the Rock here to open up second half action. Just has to regain his confidence after having a career 23 points in the first half. Somehow rumbled in between traffic there, straight to the rack. I appreciate that he's at least trying to make stuff happen, and he will here. Coming away with the theft. But it's back over to the Golden Knights. Hot potato, hot potato. Now Hammond trying to go to work. Gives it up for Kearns. He's left alone. One possession game. Golden Knights into this trap now, trying to force another turnover. Nobody there for the Trojans, right into the hands of Bentley. Northmore with the chance to cut it down to one. Kearns on his way to the line, 6-3 senior. What a momentum shift we've seen in the last two and a half minutes, Brian. This game's been flipped on its head. And what we somewhat expected to see from the Trojans, knowing that they had some key guys out tonight, starting to showcase itself here a little bit in the third quarter. 23 turnovers. And honestly, if it wasn't for Northmore's slow free throw start, they'd be in the lead right now. Splitting the pair is Kearns. But it's just a two-point game. He's got five now, and that balance of Northmore now starting to show. Bentley 12, Hammond 8, Bauer 5, Kearns 5. Trojans break the pressure. Now Suli cannot buy a bucket. And it looks like he's shying away a little bit. In the first half, he wanted the ball yeah, every time down absolutely. the floor. Foul on the floor. It's going to be team foul number three against the Trojans. And that's the fourth on Hill. Ooh. Schaller will check back in. He did. He does have three of the team's five points here in the third quarter. Bentley off the bounce, sizing up his defender, spins, deals, and gets the friendly roll. We're back to square. What a change of events. Wow. A 5-0 run by Centerberg to open up the third quarter has been flat out erased. 11-0 run right now for the Golden Knights. Sully looking to quiet it, drawing a crowd. That was a great job by Drew Hammond not to jump on the ball fake. And instead, he gets the turnover. Hammond goes end to end, ran right through Thomas Schaller, leaving him in his wake. And now Sully back to Papa and one, catching a break. Lost the handle, bounces right into his hands. In a crowd, takes a little contact. 
and gets it to go for his first points we'll of the third. We'll show you that non-call with Hammond here after the shot. Here you go. <laughs> the fact that he reached in with his left arm on the inside <laughs> and then hit him with his shoulder. Felt like there was probably enough there for a whistle. This will draw one. After right before that. That's going to be the third personal against Isaac Black. So both teams sitting kind of perplexed fouls. at what's going on <laughs> right now, you could say. Big body move inside, a traveling violation. Check it out here, Scott. Seems like both sides have a little bit of beef right now with the way the game's being called. I, I can agree. And now this one comes on the floor. It's going to go on Blaine Ball, his second team fourth. Knights looking to regain the lead. Bentley lost it. Sully sick pass up ahead. Ball couldn't catch it on the run. But it should still be Trojan basketball. Maybe. <laughs> okay. That's the right call. Here's the replay. It's the last touch by Drew Hammond. So for Centerberg, probably run through a set. If you can get an easy one right away, do it, of course. If not, hold for the final shot. But you definitely don't want to do that. Now Sully left alone from the corner. Chance for one more shot. One second, it's not recognized. And we head to the fourth, and it's a game, folks. 41-40, the Trojans. Man. Their lead burned down, but still in front as we had the money time. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management. The Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility. Podiatry and surgical consultations, too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center. It's a world of great care right around the corner. Hit him with it, Ski. Money time has arrived here in the heart of Ohio. Is it money Center time, Perk. though? This is money time, Looking though. to cash a big check for a huge win shorthanded tonight. Still got a one-point cushion, but the Golden Knights making a strong push in that third quarter. Brian Skronsky here alongside K-Mac Trav. And, whoa, what a third quarter. Um, Yeah. Um, stick with that. Northmore basketball here. Bentley inside the spin. Can't hit. Great hustle by Falk to deflect that off of Centerburg and keep possession. Yeah, no question. Excellent athleticism showcased there by Falk. They'll work it around the outside in the hands of Wenger. Now Bentley, who's been ultra aggressive of late, looking for his. He's got 14 so far. I think ultra aggressive is the only. The way these fouls have been getting called now, I think that's the way you go. Suli and Bentley both have to take this game over like that, drive it to the hole, get fouled if it's going to get called, and then, you know, you get your bucket or not, or you got to make some free throws down the stretch. 
a bizarre game nonetheless. Hammond from the free throw line, hands off winger, kick out corner, three on the way for Black. Look at Bitley skying through the third level and looking for three points on one trip, two already counting. Just muscled that up and in. That's the fourth foul. Nope. I got caught with it too, Brian. No, it is. It's the fourth foul on Schaller. And Bentley caps off the three-point play. Seven. Here in the second half, he's got 17 points. Sully off the hesitation, dribbled off his own foot. Giveaway number 25 for the Trojans. Good Man. block. It just were out of bounds when he touched it. Yeah, it looked like Lawrence might have a chance to smack it back in play, but two feet firmly on the chalk. Oh, Great how about play. the two-man game? Bentley with the setup, fault the recipient. They had to come out and double-team Bentley because of the three-point shot attempt, and Falk was wide open. Now they get a turnover and a chance to really take control of this one. Oh, they leave the leading score in the league wide open. Black with the offensive board, and that's going to be the third foul already in the frame against the Trojans. We're a minute in. And the third on Suli. Don't forget to get on the bus with them. So the sweater coming unraveled here in the second half for Centerberg. But I will say this, for a Sunderberg team that's been through so much so far in the last week, to be down five in this position with the young players, with Sue lead, leading this team without your two leading scorers, that's pretty darn impressive. That shows the grit and the effort from this team. Yeah, they're turning over a little bit, they're making some young mistakes, but this team is showing me a lot tonight. And they still have a chance to pull this off. Got to get their act together in a hurry. Or Northmore may put the baby to bed early tonight. Grant Bentley going into the seventh row to retrieve that basketball. Just an outstanding citizen all the way around. Great kid. All Ohio in baseball, possibly an All Ohio in basketball this year too. And another turnover on Centerberg. And what's really becoming apparent is just the court time with these groups out there not having a feel for one another, what they're going to do when they're just in some motion offense. But this is a great learning experience for them. You're getting some key playing time there. Bentley tiptoes the baseline. And Hammond rains home a teardrop three. Folk, the Mike and Drill off the theft. 11 point lead now for the Golden Knights. Big shot on the way. And then two Trojans fighting for the basketball. It's just been that kind of fourth quarter for them so far. Timeout, Centerberg. And look at that, a 12-0 run to start the final frame. You want to talk about money time, Golden Knights have been just that. What an effort. I mean, this is a team that has high aspirations this year, Brian. This is a team that only wants the KMAC championship, but they want their first ever district championship. They have the pieces. They started off slow, like I said, Jack Swing was out. Colonel Crawford game, Bentley goes out early, and they put up a heck of a fight against the Colonel Crawford squad. It's probably going to at least compete, make a district championship game in D4, maybe go further with David Sheldon's squad. Uh, they had a couple down games due to injury, but they're back to 100% now. And you can see a team that's down 12, it feels like all the momentum's not in their favor, and then a turnover and a bucket, another turnover and a bucket, and just like that, it just snaps on. And this is a team that I'm, nobody's seen before at Northmore. They've had a couple teams that have lost one or two games, but... They haven't had to come back like this. This is a gritty squad here at Northmore. 
As for Centerberg, like I said, this is a young squad. They're going to learn a lot from it, and they still have, they can stop. That's going to be on the floor. But nonetheless, they put up a heck of a fight through three quarters, and if they can't come back and pull this out, this is a, big, a great learning experience for all these young players at Centerberg. Especially when you get Harris, you get Reynolds back, and you get a couple of these pieces. Sue Lee scoring like he is. You're going to have three, three players scoring there. They may be able to get a couple wins in the district tournament in Division Three. Loss tonight likely puts them out of the conference race. But like you said, sometimes opportunities created for some younger pieces and parts, it can give you a better collective team as the first kid to foul out tonight, Thomas Schaller. And off the bench, well, not off the bench, but starting in place of a couple of those players. He did pretty darn good defensively inside early on. Five big points as well. And no more fouls to give, so Bryson Kearns is going to get two free throws out of this. That's the third on Jack Lawrence. and uh, That's the second time also that we've seen him called for putting the hand on the hip of the offensive player. Uh -huh. they, I guess they eliminated that after the 90s with the Jordan rules. Well, they were. I did hear that from a couple coaches that they were going to watch the hip check more and call it. But if you're going to call it there, call it for everybody on the court tonight. You can't just call it on one or two players. You have to do it throughout if you're going to go with that rule. Jack squeezes the board. Centerberg in desperate need of a basket here in the fourth. They'll get a clean look from the corner for Hill, finally! Big bucket. Big bucket. Hill's first points. See if that can start building some momentum in favor of the Trojans. Falk, wild shot. He's got some free throws, though, coming up. That's what Hunter Falk does so well, is drive it to the hole and get fouled. Creates those fouls. That's what he did against Fredericktown. He missed his first two free throws. Then after that, he kept taking to the hole. He went eight for eight in the first half, finishing eight for 10. Five, nine, senior delivers on the first. One more still on the way for Mr. Folk. And some unhappy fans here over in the home bleachers. I feel like they've been on the wrong end of some officiating here in the second half. Sully with a clean spin Great move pass. out of trouble. That was the same spot. Wanted to see Hill maybe try it again. Instead, it's Lawrence straight away. Big rebound. Sully, sharp catch, skip pass. Back from the corner, it's Bennett Hill. Now Folk gives it away and and one. Heck of a play right there. The catch in traffic and Scott able to put it up and in. So Centerberg starting to find a little spark here on the offensive end. Still got five minutes to go. but they are over the limit. Northmore is going to shoot free throws. Every personal foul the rest of the way. Don't got to earn them anymore with the one and one either. Nope. Centerberg looking to be just like the girls team earlier. Get back into the conference race. They're tied with Cardington after their big win today. That's going to be a foul on Centerberg. A chuck on Grant Bentley. Take a look at it. Yeah, just threw him out of the way. That's going to be two free throws for one of the best free throw shooters on the team. Although, tonight, he's, out, he's one for three. Bentley looking to get to a season average if he can sink them both. As you mentioned, though, some struggles at the charity stripe here this evening. Tackett's going to get a timeout after the make. It's 
to home and kitchen supply timeout. A 16-6 run here in the fourth. And we've been neglecting our fans out there, yeah. Travis. What's going on in Facebook and YouTube land? What are the people saying? Uh, take a guess. <laughs> we can all see it with our own eyes. No need to yeah. pour salt on open wounds. Uh, we have questions about the cardington Fredericktown game. A Fredericktown win puts Northmore in the sole possession of first place unless Centerburg comes back and Fredericktown wins and we have a three-way tie atop the conference. It's still in the JV game though, so we got a while. Chad Lori Richards keeps scoring Northmore. You got this. David Smith commenting. Thank you, Dave. Joe Smith, go Knights. And Chad and Lori Richards really happy for the run that Northmore's been on here in the end of the third and the fourth quarter. And the exact opposite sentiment probably for Trojans fans. Emma Bell, how many turnovers are we looking at for Centerburg here? 28. That's the most I've seen in a boys game this year compared to only nine from Northmore. So the fact that this is just a nine-point game. And I will say it's <laughs> staggering. It's 12-3 on fouls in the second half for center, you know, Centerburg 12, Northmore 3. With a big couple of minutes here, the Trojans can really put a lot of pressure, I think, on Northmore at the end of the game. But you've got to start getting some field goals. Sully with a little bit of space, <laughs> had the patience. I will say this, Brian, though. Here's referees are supposed to tell the, the scoreboard keeper, once it hits five, you don't have to keep, don't change it anymore. It says 7-1 up there right now, and I, I understand why they're doing that. <laughs> we, we get the picture. Golden Knights playing a little bit of keep away here. And they've got so many gifted ball handlers. Sometimes it is worth it to spread them out. Go five wide, four corners is really a forced shot there inside. Didn't need that from Kearns. Yeah, Kearns thought he had a good look at it, but great defense there by Lawrence. Just kick it right back out. Drive and kick, that was my key tonight. Golden Knights only with three threes, but because of their defense still able to have the lead here, they really haven't done a lot of that driving kick. Centerberg's done a very good job on guarding the three. Full court pressure has made a big difference as well in the second half as Suli's not been able to find very much space. Just three points in the second and case in point right there running right into a double team. It Ooh. has opened up for some weak side offensive rebounds. Yeah, they're going to get Grant Bentley with the foot. He had his arm right into him for a good like five seconds there and finally they're going to call him with it, his first foul. <laughs> Crucial possession here for the Berg. Kind of like what I said for Cardington in the girls game. We're getting to the point where they need to be perfect offensively. Getting about to be that time. This is the man that was able to do it in the first half. Yep, that's foul on Falk. He just put his body right into the Centerberg player. That's his fourth. And if you're Northmore, you don't have to do that. Just stay in front of the, of the ball handler. You don't have to go right in on him. I know they want to continue to get turnovers and things like that, but the referees are going to even this out. It always seems like that happens. And they're going to get, if you give them a reason, they'll call it. Centerberg. Yeah, not a little bit of big urgency. Hurry there they go. Now they will get an attack to the rim. The left handed layup, though, too firm. And now Coach Takis says go five wide. Let's spread them out. Hey, he's like, we're going to slow things down. Yeah, spread it out. Suli, very good defensive player, nearly gets a five second count. Blade Tackett still with two timeouts remaining as well if Northmore gets into some trouble. Closing in on two minutes remaining. Fourth quarter's been all Golden Knights. They trailed by one heading into the frame. 
And finally, they'll stop the clock here. 205 showing. And we got some free throws on the way for Hunter Folk. Yeah, it was on Ryder Scott. Folk, two for four tonight as we get a timeout by Coach Marhefka. And Hunter saying, you already gave me the basketball. Let me shoot this first one. He was really pleading his case. And he did already have the ball in his hands when they blew the whistle. Yeah. Typically, you let the player shoot the ball. Absolutely. Just well, been one of those kind of nights. Let's see if I can pull something in for you guys right here. Yeah, I'm on the edge of my seat. We've got one of the strangest setups I've ever had for a game here, Travis. We're on opposite ends of the table, so normally we're side by side. I can see what you're looking at. Not tonight. A little different. Got about 18 inches of space up here. But keeping me on my toes, literally, all night. Oh, live look in here at Colonel Crawford at Upper Sandusky from the mountaintop. And the sweatiest man in the game, David Sheldon, burns through about four towels per contest. Played Tackett, played for David Sheldon when he went to the regional. Not the last time, but the time before that. Uh, was it 2017 when they had that first victory since like 06 or something like that? That was Blade Tackett's squad back then. It always comes down to the wire and upper and Colonel Crawford. It's one of the best Northern 10 rivalries. Certainly some good ones out there. The Eagles need a win to try to keep pace with Carey, who everybody's trailing by at least two games. You know what stinks, though? Carey moved up the D3. They're an OG's district. Oh. Falk hits both, and just like against Fredericktown, misses the first two. He's been perfect since from the line. He's the latest in double figures now with 10. Trojans don't want to rush it, but certainly want to be pretty quick with your bucket. Nice shot. That's Jack Lawrence switching to the left hand midair. He's got eight tonight. And if you're Centerberg, you want to try to pressure here. See if you can't force a turnover or a missed shot. Bentley, though, quickly to the rack for 20. And he is at his average that leads the K-Mac. He'll bring Suli off the screen. Quick kick out. Three on the way nice. for Hill is second. Down to an eight-point game. You think Northmore is going to pull away with this, but then Centerberg tries to bring it right back. However, there's only 65 seconds left. Folks been hot from the line, probably wanted to get out of his hands. Now Wenger might be the guy you send to the free throw line. And said, zip pass inside for Hammonds. 15 for him. He's got nine in the second half. Might be the finishing touches that Northmore needs to escape the Coliseum with a win. Suli has been ice cold in the second half. He has just one bucket and about 10 shots. For the Golden Knights, too, that is win number 10. And that's a big game because they're packed at the top. Top four teams in that central district in D4. A win like this could propel Northmore from four to at least two, maybe even that number one seed. And you have to remember in that central district, it's split up into two different districts. So you get the top seed, you really get a choice in not only where you, which district you want to play, but where you want to play the regional, either at Kettering Altar in Dayton or at Ohio University in Athens. A lot of power in that top yes. seed. Top two, even with that. So the Golden Knights going to pull one out here on the road. It was looking a little dreary early on in that third quarter. They have turned up the heat over the last 15 minutes. Centerberg fittingly throwing it out of bounds here. Hand it. You got to hand it to center. I, it's tough, but you got to hand it to them. The way they fought, they just ran out of steam in that at the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, but they put up a heck of a fight for what they have. They will go down here. 
63-52. Back-to-back losses now for the Berg as Northmore picks up their third straight win. We will return with your Knox Community Hospital post-game action that will include an interview with your most valuable player. So drop us a comment. Let us know who you would like to hear from in the post-game interview. And we'll be back with stats, that, and more. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility. Podiatry and surgical consultations too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center. It's a world of great care right around the corner. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Just enjoyed live and free game action to kick off your Saturday night, thanks to Monarch Title Services. If you're selling or refinancing your real estate, you get to choose the title company. Why not support those who support the Trojans? You can also close with confidence anytime, anywhere. Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert care. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Morrow County Job and Family Services, you can call the number in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. And by Knox Community Hospital, where they're in the community for the community. We are just moments away from our most valuable player interview with Mr. Grant Bentley. Had a big game for the Golden Knights, especially in the second half. That's coming up here in just a moment. Stay with us. Ohio 
Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility. Podiatry and surgical consultations too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center. It's a world of great care right around the corner. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Back now with your Knox Community Hospital post-game show. I'm Brian Skaronsky. Emma Bell joining me now. And Emma's been tracking the stats for us all night here at this doubleheader. And obviously the big storyline in this one, maybe aside from some of the calls in the second half, were the turnovers by Centerburg. They came out of the gates hot with the yeah. host. They had five in the first minute and a half, and it really never slowed down. Uh, yeah, they ended up having 29 turnovers overall, which you never really see that in a boys game, but uh, they did have a few freshmen that joined them tonight. I know some of their players are out hurt, so I guess that kind of put them in a tough t situation, but um, I think with all of the freshmen that came in tonight and played, um, they did a pretty decent job keeping Northmore they battled. Yeah. Like they were it in the game. It wasn't a blowout. Like, it, it could have been worse. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, they were in control of the game early on in the third quarter, led by as many as 13 in this one. But as the final stats will reflect, it was the Golden Knights taking control in the second half. 19 buckets in the lane for Northmore tonight. They didn't shoot it very well from long range. They just made three Emma but those 29 turnovers, Hurt, that's yeah. so hurtful. 
Yeah. Um, Sunnenberg had 11 two-pointers. Um, Northmore was driving a lot more to the bucket. Uh, Rebound-wise, Northmore had 17 rebounds. Sunnenberg had 20, so not much of a difference there. Uh, team fouls, that's something to talk about. Um, Sunnenberg yeah. definitely racked up some of the fouls. 24 team fouls overall. Northmore, 14. <sighs> I don't know, the refing was a little bit of a... Mm, in the third quarter, um, almost every single time that Sunnenberg was defending someone, there was a foul called, so some fans were not very pleased, but. That's basketball sometimes. You gotta try to roll with the punches. Yep. Can't let the referees <laughs> dictate the game. And like we were talking about, I really think that the Trojans gave them their best shot, and they get a go on the road coming up next at a Danville team that's really been struggling. They're one and 13 on the year. Could be back to close at full strength. I'm not sure exactly how serious Grayson Reynolds' inner uh, injury is, but to get back there, leading scorer, adding another piece and component to this team, another ball handler, I think they're in pretty good shape moving oh, forward. Oh yeah, I, I also agree with you on that one. Um, I don't know, the turnovers just hurt them tonight. I think if they didn't have that many turnovers, it definitely would have been a lot closer game. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say, stat-wise. And then give me your quick perspective on the Golden Knights, who next will take on Mount Gilead. That'll be a home game for them next week. What did you think about Northmore collectively? Um, uh, well, during the first half of the game, I was like, oh, like they're kind of slow. And then the second half, I saw it. They're quick to the ball, drive all the time, nonstop. So hopefully they'll pull off a win against Mount Gilead. So. All right, we're going to take one more quick commercial break, and we are going to be right back. We've got our MVP standing by. Stay tuned. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health, believe in we. We return now with your Morrow County Hospital player of the game, Grant Bentley, hanging out with me now after a big come from behind wind. And uh, halfway through that third quarter, I mean, you guys are down double digits there. You're playing against a team there without a couple of starters. So maybe from a, a mental standpoint, they're hanging in there. Thought that they might be able to keep up with you. Everything changed after that. You guys go on like a 12-0 run and kind of shut the door. In your opinion, what, what was the big difference on the floor? Uh, I mean, it was just settling in. I mean. Uh, we got a lot of seniors, a lot of experience. I think we got what, se six or seven seniors and a lot of juniors that contribute a lot and they have experience on the varsity level and that's really important. So just being able to settle in, I mean, we know eventually the tides would turn and help us and a little bit of pressure helped us get some easy layups and get ba back into the game. This has been one of the good rivalries going on in the K-Max since you guys all kind of came together in the league. So to win here on this floor, something I don't know that you've done a whole lot of. Uh, just, just how nice that feel? I, I think it is my first win here. We haven't, yeah, we haven't won here yet. So um, I mean, obviously it feels good. Haven't been able to get them yet, but over the last couple of years they've had great teams. I mean, the coaching staff there they do a great job, but it felt good. It felt good. Offensively tonight, I think you scored 10 of the first 12 for your guys, maybe 10 of the first 11. You lit the fuse there, and then you got it going again in the second half. What do you think your scoring and your offensive output means to this team? What do you feel like you bring to the, the, the table in terms of your piece of the puzzle? I mean, it's just all, all, all team effort. I mean, there's, there'll be nights where I, where, I, where I score some, but we have five guys that can score at all times, and that's what we pride ourselves in. And, you know, it does feel good to contribute, but we have, we have five guys that can score. Uh, the big storyline tonight, 29 turnovers you forced. That, that's probably a season high, I would imagine, for, for this team this season. Uh, defensively, how, how would you describe the energy and effort that you displayed, really from the opening whistle? You, you guys were after it all night on the defensive end. 
I mean, it's one of those you have to be when you're down double digits, second, third quarter. You got to you got to create turnovers, get some buckets the other way, and that's what that's what we did. You guys are at the top of the league standings right now. To maintain that, where are some parts of the game that you feel like you need to improve here over the last month or so? I mean, there's a lot we can improve on offensively, defensively. We got a lot, long way to go. So, again, just one day at a time, we'll come in tomorrow, watch some film, and then get after it. Well, enjoy this one for tonight. Before we cut you loose, look in the camera, give some thank yous and some shout outs to anybody you want. I know I got, I got family out there, two brothers watching and a sister out there. So, thank you guys for watching. All right, how about that? It's a family affair here. Your MVP, Mr. Grant Bentley. From primary care to orthopedics, women's health to pain management, the Knox Community Hospital Centerburg Health and Wellness Center provides excellent care for virtually all your family's health care needs. Comprehensive lab services are also offered at our state-of-the-art facility. Podiatry and surgical consultations, too. The Centerburg Health and Wellness Center. It's a world of great care right around the corner. Here to wrap things up from the Coliseum on your Knox Community Hospital post game. Great doubleheader here this afternoon. Two games to determine the top dog in the conference. We saw a mini upset earlier in the girls' game with Centerburg pulling within a half game of the conference leader. Didn't happen here in the second half of things with the boys going down, but a phenomenal effort. Isaiah Suli, unbelievable in the first half. Only had one field goal in the second half. Northmore shut them down, and they remain the kings of the conference for now. Again, hand it to Centerburg. They punched Northmore in the math over and over again in that first half. Even in the third quarter, had it 12 points. But the Golden Knights, as Bentley said, they weren't getting out of here with a loss. They were going to do 